Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to our session on asset compute service extensibility. I am uh, Chandra Natarajan, engineering manager in asset AM Assets as Cloud Service. With me, um, I have Jamie Delbig, uh, software engineer on our team. Uh, she's an expert in asset compute service. Uh, she will walk you through uh, to, uh, to the uh, the code and the architecture of custom worker. Um, let's get started on what we'll be. Uh, covering today, um, a brief overview on what Asset AM Asset as Cloud Service offers, how Asset Compute Service works, and how to extend it. And we will uh, wrap that up with a demo and uh, give some time for question and answers. What is AM Asset as Cloud Service and what it offers? AM Asset as Cloud Service is a cloud solution for experience management um, that offers always on, meaning better reliability and um, highly available. And all, it's also always current that helps us to continuously uh, provide access to the best in class features to our customers in short time. And uh, very important, it's always at scale uh, with the growing digital asset explosion. The cloud solution helps us to keep up uh, with the performance required in terms of computing power and network IO uh, to process these uh, assets at scale. And last but not the least, it offers uh, us to learn a lot by keeping up, keeping us up to date on the customer needs as well as the performance needs and security updates. And in turn, um, the, all the intelligence and uh, machine learning we hook up to the solution helps us to share the insights back to our customers. With that background, we'll see how AM Assets Cloud Service works and uh, how Asset Compute, Compute Service um, helps cloud service to scale for the demand. Before AM as such as cloud service uh, in the AM on-prem or uh, AMS, the binary handling and the processing used to happen within uh, experience manager author. So when the client uploads the binary, it, it used to be handled within author as well as the processing used to happen within the author instance. In cloud service, we externalize the binary handling uh, by directly uploading to the blob storage. And from then on, only URL, used, URL is used across processing everywhere. So that helps uh, offload the binary handling and processing and provides that computing power for other parts of the lifecycle management of asset. Uh, today, when a client uploads a binary, it will be directly uploaded to blob storage. And then asset um, I mean, AM assets would uh, make a call to asset compute service and processing. And this happens asynchronously. So AM assets will not be overloaded if there's a peak hour or bulk ingestion happens in AM assets. Let's zoom in to what Asset Compute Service is. Asset Compute Service is a very highly scalable and very lightweight and easy to extend platform service um, to process digital assets of AEM. Its primary responsibility is to transform images, videos, documents, and all other file formats into different rendition. It is built on serverless architecture, runs on Adobe I runtime and Apache Visc, Apache Open Visc. We'll see the internals of Asset Compute Service. When a new user uploads a binary, uh, through AEM assets, the binary is directly uploaded to bi binary cloud storage or blob storage, and the, the binary URL and the processing profile configured in AEM assets is shared to Asset Compute Service, and Asset Compute Service then orchestrates to the respect to workers to do the actual transformation. A worker here is a serverless function that transforms a source asset to different types of rendition. For example, if it's a Photoshop file, there'll be a Photoshop worker which takes the source Photoshop file and uses the library to convert into different rendition requested in the processing profile. And the rendition is pushed back to the binary storage and the success event is sent back to um, AM assets via Adobe IO events. So it, the whole process is asynchronous and plus it's running on serverless, enables us to run on scale uh, with the demand created by peak hour load or by bulk ingestion from, from one or more customers. As you could see, the, there are two types of workers here, um, a core service worker and a custom worker. A core service worker is out of the box functionality that comes out of the box with AM as a cloud service. And if a customer needs uh, additional processing using uh, an, uh, an Adobe API or an external API, they could build using um, our custom worker framework, which we'll be covering in the upcoming slides. So what is extensibility? There are two types of extensibility supported uh, in AMS cloud service. One is config-based. When uh, when you configure in the processing profile to have different uh, height, or height or width uh, for images or something like that in processing profile, still our out-of-the-box workers would process them with a different configuration. That's one level of extensibility. The next level of extensibility is through custom workers, primarily writing some code to extend the image processing or document processing or video processing 
uh, leveraging some external APIs. And what is a custom worker from Azure Compute Service point of view is a Project Firefly headless app uh, written in Node.js. Why uh, we need this? Like I mentioned, developer can create custom applications to call external APIs and do additional processing of, of the document or image or videos, also to extract more information about those images or uh, also to share it to other solutions if you want to. So I mentioned Project Firefly. So what is Project Firefly? It's an end-to-end -end, uh, developer framework to build and deploy custom application that helps to extend Adobe Experience Cloud functionalities in minutes. And it, it provides the complete ecosystem from creation of the app all the way to deployment to production. With that, I will hand it off to Jamie to walk you through the internals of a custom worker and how it works, how to build your own custom worker. Thank you, Chander. I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. Um, so I'll go a little deeper first into the architecture of the Asset Compute Service and specifically how it calls our custom workers. So as mentioned before in the other architecture diagram, an asset is uploaded directly to cloud blob storage and then a processing request is sent to the asset compute service. Then the asset compute service will determine um, which worker to send the request to. And in this case, it will go to our custom worker. This custom worker is deployed in a third party IO runtime namespace and is exactly a headless Firefly app. This custom worker is a compute SDK and that will download the source file directly from cloud blob storage. Then invoke the um, a callback function. This rendition callback function is basically where uh, what cu um, custom workers have to define. So this will do something like call an external API. Um, in the case of my demo that I will show, it's going to call a Photoshop Actions API. After it produces the rendition, it is then uploaded directly back to Cloud Blob Storage, and a successful event in the form of an Adobe I/O event is sent back to the client. All right. So before I start my demo, um, I'm going to give a little bit of prerequisites for um, creating a custom worker. So what you need um, is one to be part of an Adobe Experience Cloud organization that has AM as a cloud service enabled. Um, this also needs to have the Adobe Project Firefly. In addition, since I will be calling um, Photoshop APIs, you will need to add and have access to the Photoshop API Creative Cloud Automation Services in the Adobe Developer Console. Um, the tools I will be using in the demo are Node.js version 10 or 12. I'll be using version 12 today. Um, the AIO CLI, Docker Desktop, and VS Code, although any other IDE or text editor you prefer is also fine. Um, so I already created a Firefly project, and you could do this in the developer console by choosing create project from template, and then you just add the workspaces and create an app name for your project. The other thing that which I already mentioned is you have to add, um, this is just for this demo, since we're going to be calling the Photoshop Actions API, you will have to add the Photoshop API service to your Firefly project. All right, so now I'm going to head over to the terminal and I'm going to run the command to um, create a Firefly application. So it's, yeah, I'll move this to the top so it's easier to see. So it's AIO app init and then we'll call our project worker CC Photoshop. So I'll have to choose which org project and workspace I'd like to work in. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Again, I'm choosing the Firefly project I created and the workspace where I have the Photoshop API added. This is downloading all of the config, which makes it so this information is in our .env file and we are able to deploy our action. Okay, so for custom workers, we only need actions. So we can go ahead and uncheck the rest of these options. It's important to note that also web assets right now are not able to be used with custom workers. Uh, they are not needed. Um, so just make sure you uncheck this web apps at web assets option and check the actions option. Um, then which type of action. So we have um, template custom workers already in place. So you can go ahead and just choose this Adobe asset compute worker option. And then we'll just call our worker worker. So what this will do, if you are familiar with Firefly projects, is it will create um, the application, the skeleton of a Firefly application, and 
also install all the, the dependencies needed for the project. So if you're familiar with Node.js, um, you may have had some experience with package JSONs, but basically they store all the dependencies needed for the project. So that's what it's doing right now. And after this is complete, we'll be able to open this up in VS Code. I'll go through um, quickly the structure of the Firefly application, but I won't go through all the pieces in detail. So I encourage you to read the Firefly. Okay, so let's open. I'll expand this so it's easier to see. All right, so as mentioned, I'll quickly walk through some of the parts here. So this is the package JSON, which contains all of the dependencies needed for the project. Since this is an asset compute worker, it comes already with our asset compute SDK and some of our developer tooling, like our plugin for the AIO CLI. This is the manifest YAML. This basically tells runtime what to deploy. Oh, I see zoom in request. I will do that. Hope this is better. All right. Yeah, so the manifest YAML will um, basically tell runtime what to deploy. You can see it has a path to our action file and some other limits on the container. You can adjust these as you see fit. The .env file contains all of the credentials for your project including the namespace credentials. So the namespace credentials in here is how the AIO CLI knows where to deploy your action. Um, then we have some test cases here, and then we get into the action code. So this is basically the simplest, here, I'll do this so you can see. This is the skeleton of a worker. Um, so it's basically the simplest um, as a compute worker possible calls our worker API, which as mentioned, it um, downloads the source file, so it's available locally, then invokes the asynchronous rendition callback. So this asynchronous rendition callback function here is really all we have to provide um, to be able to have this worker work in, our, in the asset compute service. So all that it has to do is write something to this rendition.path um, variable here. Um, so in this example, very simple, it just copies the source file to the rendition file. Another thing to note is that um, the rendition instructions are where you can store custom parameters that you can pass in to your worker. Um, yeah, so we have some test cases here. I'll go ahead and run the test cases to make sure our sample worker is working properly. AIO app test. So as mentioned, we have our own um, test framework that we built into the AIO CLI. And uh, our goal, so it uses Docker Desktop. That's why Docker Desktop is a requirement um, for developing. And basically, we make it so the test cases are super simple. You just have to define a source file, um, parameters, and the expected output. So not much coding involved to write some test cases. We also have a mocking framework. So if your worker calls external APIs, you can mock those APIs in the test cases. All right, so now that our worker is passing the test successfully, let's actually add in the Photoshop actions code so that it does something interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy in that code. Um, so all this code that I'll be copying in is available and it's open source in our example custom worker repo. So I'm not gonna go into it in great detail here, but you will be able to take a closer look after and ask questions. Um, so another thing for this photo, for the Photoshop action code is it brings in a few more libraries. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install that here. Sorry about the screen size. It's kind of tricky to fit all this into one screen. But I'll quickly try to explain some of this code here. So you, you can see it calls the worker API just like the other code, um, the really simple worker. And the important part here is that it invokes the Photoshop Actions API. So there's a library that um, basically is just a wrapper around the REST API to the Photoshop Actions call. And we call that here. Another important thing to note is we do pass in some custom parameters 
Um, the custom parameter that is needed is the Photoshop Actions URL. So if you're familiar with Photoshop Actions, um, basically what it does is it takes a file and then applies Photoshop Actions to the file. So Photoshop Actions are basically like a set of instructions to apply to an image. So it's how you can, you know, create filters and tons of different Photoshop steps all in one in, in, in bulk and on one file. So um, if you have some interesting actions already available, you can just run these on the file. Okay, so now that our action is ready to go ahead and deploy it using the AIO app deploy command. Again, sorry, it's kind of hard to see here. Um, yeah, so basically the URL that is returned from the AIO app deploy command is exactly what we have to put into the processing profile in AEM. So we'll go ahead and copy this URL here. So this URL that's returned, remember this, and then we'll head over to our AEM instance. Okay, so now we're in our AEM instance and we have to set up a processing profile to call our custom worker. So I'll go to create, we'll call this Photoshop API, head over to the custom tab and click add new. So the Photoshop action I'm gonna apply to this uh, is a logo. So we'll just call it logo. And then here's where we put that endpoint that was just provided to us by the AIO app deploy command. So as you see, as you can see here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, important note is that this um, Firefly app, which got deployed based on the credentials defined in our .emv file, has to be in the same organization as our, um, it has to be deployed in the same organization as our AEM instance. So the Firefly project I created is also in the same instance, in the same org as this AEM instance, very important. Okay, so as mentioned, we have one custom parameter called Photoshop Actions, and then we can actually choose, so I've already uploaded the logo action to AEM, so we can, just go ahead, oh, sorry, and choose the action file. Here we go. This logo action we have uploaded. And now our rendition is ready and we just have to apply it to a folder. So I'll go apply this to the Adobe Developers Live demo folder. And then we'll head over to this folder. You can see the action files already in it. Um, and then I'm gonna upload a file and what should happen is this action that we just deployed um, and added to a processing profile, when this image is uploaded, um, it will invoke that custom worker that we just created, which will apply this logo Photoshop action to this file. So we'll give it a few moments. We'll see if it's ready. As you can see, these are the other renditions that, are, that also get processed on the file. So we'll give it a refresh. And now we can see we have this logo PNG that we defined that calls our custom worker. And look, we applied this Photoshop actions file, which basically does some edits on the photo and then also applies some graphics. So you can see how easy this was to set up. You know, we got it running in a matter of minutes and deployed and able to connect it to our AEM instance. So you can see how you can easily extend off of this to call other cool APIs, like other Photoshop APIs, Lightroom APIs, or other external services. All right, so that is the end of the demo. We have some time now for questions, so I'll head over to Q&A. Thanks, right. Jamie. To summarize, this AM cloud service is built to uh, handle the scale and the demand um, required for the current trends, and asset compute service helps to scale, to solve that problem by having dynamic scaling mechanisms built into it. Plus it provides uh, easy to extend framework for developers to create custom processing workflows on top of existing processing workflows. With that, our session is done. Open up, let's open it, open it up for questions. I do see a lot of questions flowing in chat. Uh, let's see, I try to address as much. So question from Roger Yam, Yamnam. So the questions on dynamic media, I think it's been answered. 
why node 12 not node 14 um, so that's a limitation or or uh, it's a feature we are uh, waiting for support on from project firefly uh, so once it's supported we would also be able to run on node 14 so a uh, question from helg harant yeah so you can store any uh, rendition that is generated by an external api like uh, jamie shared in the demo we are getting the rendition from photoshop and storing that within uh, am assets it's not just a rendition it could also be metadata um, in the example worker link i shared there are uh, multiple sample workers for different type of use cases including metadata extracting metadata from external service Another question from Helge Arns. Can we also access secure keys we set up as environment variables from custom workers? Um, I'm not clear about the question, but if the question is how to pass the secure keys to custom workers, you define that in your processing profile. When you define the processing profile, when you uh, provide the URL to your application, you could also add custom parameters to those and which can include the, the keys you needed to access your external service. Okay, smart crop available out of the box. It's in our roadmap, but it's not yet. When can I find a specification for the Photoshop action? Yeah, I think I sent um, the link to okay. the Photoshop um, library okay. as well as also you can free Photoshop actions online or you can go into Photoshop and create your own. Okay, the question is where to find. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, this Photoshop API uh, SDK, the SDK that Jamie shared uh, is primarily the, the wrapper on top of the APIs. and. Uh, the document, I mean, that API SDK should have the reference to the actual API doc. Can we convert text to image? It depends on the API. Today, our extensibility is, is purely based on uh, calling an external API, or if you could do something with the Node.js libraries. So if your API can take uh, text and uh, return an image, yes, you can. Yes, to answer Durga's question, yes, um, it is only on AM Assets Cloud Service. So we do have smart tag uh, functionality uh, built in to uh, AM Access Cloud Service as part of the complete service directly talking to Sensei. But I'm not sure about the tags generated from Photoshop API function. If it is part of the rendition that comes back, yes, you can uh, extend this custom worker to, to add, get, provide, get additional data from that API and pass it back, back to AM, which will be stored as custom data. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone.